again, I mount the, the X axis uh, mount now. So it's got these adjustable rollers in it. Um, they have a little relief flat on them to, to clear the actual rail when they run through there. And these top ones here you can unbolt, like I'm going to do now. Unbolt these. motor plate. So this, these bottom rollers underneath the, the rail sits on top there and these bottom rollers come up through through these holes here, through the motor drive plate and with a, a washer and a nylock nut they screw on there and it kind of hangs up the side there. Um, let's get the other ones ready. So there's the arrangement I'm talking about. Um, if you can see that, it's, a, it's got like a little standoff, a bearing, a little 3D printer washer, then the bolt. Again, they come up through the frame. Bolt it on there. For now, I haven't got the bearing arrangements for those rollers around, so I'm just gonna put a couple of bolts in there just to hold it in position, hold the plate down for now, until I get those rollers worked out, what's gonna go there. Might actually move the camera around to the side and get a better, better view of that for you. So with this, you've got to square it up Make sure the standoff flat is up against the side so it's not touching. Just tighten it up a bit with a, with a ratchet first. Do you get it close and it's ready to sort of slide across. So there you can sort of slide the roller in. Let's just do it the other way. Let's hold it with a spanner on the bottom. And try the ratchet on the top. Much easier. Make sure the standoff flat is towards the edge, which it's not. Otherwise it will rub on the rub on the gantry rail. Put it around that way. That's it. Right down there, the Tottenham. Everything's just plastic 3D printed here. So, so I'll, I'll explain what I did here as well. Um, you can see these holes here on JD's garage. This one's drilled an open top like this, so you can put a short bolt through the bottom. This one here still has a, let's do that, yep, right. This one here, I'll move it across a bit. Okay. This one here has a bolt sticking out of the top here. And when this thing slides across, you can only go to there and hit that bolt, which limits the distance you can get to the side. If you counter drill the top here and put a bolt through just from the bottom, you can get What's that, another 25 millimeters, another inch more of your gantry to use. So then you get 50 millimeters more overall use of that, of that gantry, which is, um, which is a lot when you consider the JD Garage version only has like a 900 mil bed. So you have 900 mil bed like this and you lose 50 mil off that end, you lose 50 mil off that end, you're down to like 700 mil cutting area, which is a bit silly they haven't done um, Counterboard kind of sunk that hole there too and got rid of that. So, um, so you can see that's the that's the um, x-axis rail sliding back and forward. I got a motor I got to mount on here now. Then I'll do the rollers. I got two motors I can mount on the sides here. So, so that'll be next. So you can see this thing it does full 
full motion and nice and smooth and easy. These ones obviously move a lot better. These bearings are a lot better quality. You really hear a lot of carriage noise on that long travel because of the um, because of the dodgy bearings they get you to use. Hear the carriage there. I hear the streamlined sort of version here. So um, I'm going to get this up and running, and then I'm going to purchase some new bearings. I'm going to strip them out of these carriages here and replace them with something better. Like if you see, I don't know if you can see in the picture there. But these bearings here, they have a lot of side wobble and side play in them. They're just pretty much crap, really. But um, but what do you do? You gotta gotta follow the plans, right? Anyway, oh my um, Z access drive hasn't arrived yet, so I, when it does, I'll have to pull this apart and fix this part up so the torch height fits working properly. Um, and I'll get onto these motors now. So my torch is on this side, I'm going to put the cable as far back as I can, so this mounts up here in this back hole here. All these holes line up exactly perfect, like I mentioned, I had, it, I had these pieces laser cut, look how tight that fits in there without even, without even putting a screw in it. Okay, so I have the the um, six mil or five mil, the five four mil nut, nylock nut, with the socket head cap screw. Put the four of those in just loosely for now. I always hold the nut underneath and turn the screw while I can, just to get it lined up and started. This one too. And the last one. Push this back one over here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the stepper motor. The next job is to mount the tensioners in these two holes here, so we'll we'll get set up for that. All right, so we've got to install the the belt guides. Um, so I put the little gear on the. Um, Little gear on the stepper motor. So these these gears they come in a little packet like this. What's that? There's five in a packet. They're like twelve bucks, twelve dollars, fifteen dollars something like that on Amazon. Um, so I got one in there. You can tell on the side here they've got like a little grub screw that goes in the side and one that goes in. There's a little flat little flat cut in the top of the top of the stepper motor up here. So what we've got to do now is put these um, belt guides on. So what they are is they're an eight mil eight millimeter bolt eight millimeters for me because I'm in Australia they've got a um, they call it like a fender washer it's just an oversized washer but I couldn't get the right size ones for an eight mil bolt so I actually got some that were what size did I say these are it says they are uh, a quarter or, or for M6 so this is the M6 bolt not an M8 bolt um, Sorry, M8 bolt. So I drilled it from M6 out to out to M8 in the center. I put um, I put some of those little black those little black washers that we used before 
little 3D printed washers. We put one of those. So we, we put the fender washer down, the 3D printer washer, two of those bearings, another 3D printed washer, then a fender washer, then a nut, and it screws in the top of your Y axis drive like this. Don't let the bottom nut come too loose when you're doing it. Find your 13 millimeter spanner. You need to make sure that the, the bottom nut goes tight as well as the top. Um, the top is sort of got to nip up, but the bottom's got to go tight because you need that. You need that movement in that bearing. If it gets too tight, the belt will drag on, so the belt's going to come across from the adjuster under this tent, under this idler, around the stepper motor, back through this idler, and go to the end of the um, the anchor point there. So, next step is attaching attaching the belt. So they're both on there now. Nice and smooth, how it runs back and forward. Um, I've got to get the stepper motor gear drive up at the right height, run the belt through. Right, so here's the here's the toothed timing belt. I was going to focus on that thing. You can see the teeth in it. So it's matched. It's a nine millimeter tall gear there. Oh, sorry, nine millimeter belt and a ten millimeter tooth um, size on there. So what I've got to do is I've got to run I've got to run it through without this whole belt just spilling off everywhere. I'll put it on the floor so it doesn't roll around. I've got to get it through through this tensioner around that idler around the gear and around this idler around this anchor, I mean, or whatever you call it. And it comes back through, doesn't do that. It's got this little, it's got these little 3D printed um, stoppers that go on there first. So they go, they go around here, through there. And when it comes out, you kind of line the, you kind of line the tooth belt up with its gears. Like it's kind of like it's meshed together in its gear. You bring this thing across like it's going to be full distance to the end there. Work out your length on this side and cut it off. I'll find something to cut it with. That's going to go around there and back through there now. I'll cut off about here. Pull it around that bit of it. No, no. Thread the, thread the little stopper. belt um, anchor through first or in the back of the tensioner back through now I'm going to pull a little bit of tension on this to start with so the tension doesn't do all the work get that in there all right so there you can see that now what I've got to do is I've got to adjust this belt up this gear up so so these bits here are, are parallel let's um undo these i need that to run in the center Seems to run okay. Then let's tighten up these, tighten up these little anchors, Allen anchors, Allen, Allen screws on this gear. All right, so there we have, there we have the timing belt, or the um, tooth belt for running the um, running the gear back and forward on this um, Y axis or X axis. Now the tensioner. Um, on this end here, it has a little 
a little bolted connector and you just I've got a nut either side of it just to, as a backup. I don't know how tight it is tight. But um, I'm just going to nip it up there. For now, there we go. Just got to tighten the screws on this tensioner over here. And that's that. Okay, now I've got to assemble the drive plates for the other stepper motors. So those um, those other stepper motors, here they are. Here you can see the size difference between the the Y axis, which is the long the long travel, and compared to the X axis, which is the cross travel. So there's a a size difference in the two motors. So these motors sit up in here, um, this way. These motors sit up in here, this way, and run off that drive plate that I that I have. I'll just um, bring up the drive plate and I'll show you another issue I found with the JD's garage plans. Okay, I'll show you one of the little design faults. From the JD garage design, um, so it tells you to cut the the intern the outer tube here for this um, for this Y axis. What is it called? X axis or Y axis? Y axis um, to one ninety five, I think it is the the oh, what I can't remember the exact dimension. But when you cut that, this plate that I had, these had like I said, I had these laser cutouts, so they are exact to the, I don't know, quarter of a millimetre in in accuracy. Um, but what happened was it takes the it takes the plate over the top of these grub screws, or as JD calls them, set screws. So what I did was I had to trim off the end of this so it cleared these. Otherwise, you'd never be able to adjust them if this plate is on top of it, um, or you'd have to pack behind them. So. Um, I just trimmed off this side here, which um, allows me a bit of movement in there. You can see it back and forth moving there. Um, and then now I've just got to go through the measuring process of where it actually fits. It, it kind of fits, if you look at this side here, it kind of fits um, like central to that block when it's actually on there. So it's kind of in that position there, like that. And it fits on there. You can see I've got the the um, y-axis stepper motor bolted into it already because it's a bit of a bit of a shit to get to the back of it. If you have a look, you need a really long um, long Allen key down the bottom in there to get into the back of that. Anyway, that's one of them. I'll get the other one, other stepper motor mounted the plate. I've already modified the plate. It's sitting over there on the bench. And then I'll get the plans out and I'll work out the exact height and position that this has got to go. Once that's done, we'll, um, we'll bolt it on. I'll get the end plug for there. I've actually got one here now. I just might as well shove it in while I remember. And there's the, the plug. There it is in there. All right, I'll get that on. Before I get it on, there's a, they call it a, what they call it a pro tip. So on the back, it's got to have a bolt. It's got to have two bolts through through the back of there that come out those two bolt holes there that hold your hold your guides on for your belt. Right, this is where I'm up to. Um, as you can see here, the the Y axis motor plate is installed. The um, NEMA 23 stepper motor is installed. There's the arrangement they suggest for the um, for the guide pulleys. I, I've, I've tapped the holes in the sides of these end plates here, drilled and tapped them for the tensioners. Um, this side just has like the two holes for the anchor point for the tensioner. You can see here, 
this is what the tensioner and the end anchor point looks like. That's a 3D printed part there. It just has a um, it has a bolt in the back of it. You can see the bolt there, and you can see the belt sticking through, and the little tensioner bracket that holds it. It runs through through those guide rollers just there. That's that um, that motor plate that I was um, playing around and tapping the threads on before. That has quite a few. Um, it looks kind of flimsy, the whole 3D printed arrangement, but when you think about it, it has, it's 3D printed here for this bottom bit and the L bracket goes on the back. But this top bit has a has the two bolts for these little guide rollers here um, on it. It has three other bolts, you can see, sticking through the top here. There's one, two, three, and they're under the back, under there. You can see them up in there. That's like a solid, what's that, like three or four mil plate. It is very solid. On the back side where the, where the sort of torch height controller part is, um, it has this steel backing plate up here too. So the weakest point is actually that corner right through there. Um, so I don't know why they didn't just make, oh, excuse me, I don't know why they didn't just make this, this bracket here like an L, like a bit wider and an L shape so it came up and bolts into these bolts here too. It would make that whole arrangement a lot stronger. I might actually, I might actually take it off and weld a little piece up the back here so it bolts onto the back of there so it'll be a full L shape. And then a lot of people's 3D printed parts crack through there because it's the only bit that's really unsupported. So um, there's that. There's that torch height arrangement that's on there, like you see before. Um, as as this comes down, this this bit where my thumb is here usually has the screw from the Z axis on it. And as the torch goes down and it hits, it hits a bit of plate. It drives down, hits that limit, and it stops the drive, and then it backs it off and comes back up. I don't know whatever amount you set it. So there's that arrangement there. It's, Quite free and moving. Um, over this side, you can see the stepper motor is installed here too. I have the end plate on here too, like the motor plate, but I don't have the bearings to um, to mount the um, the guide rollers on here. Once I mount the guide rollers and I get the two new belt tensioners that are getting three D printed, I'll mount this side up. Um, I don't have my stepper motor drivers yet, so I can't, I can't actually um, connect the whole arrangement up and and get it moving freely. Um, it, this is the this is the tensioner arrangement on this side. You can see it's just a bolt going through, and there's the belt coming around the back of it there. And you can see in here, it, it feels fairly strong, like it's a quite a rigid arrangement. I think the newer version they have is they make an L bracket out of steel. This looks way more professional this bracket i'm going to see how long it lasts if it doesn't last i'll make one out of steel but there's the small um tensioner bracket there it's a 3d printed part with a thread through the middle the biggest issue you have is the shape of this thing i think i've got a spare one over here someone will show you the shape of this part as you can see here in my hand this bit here where my thumb is see how it's radiused you can't mount a bolt on top of that properly. So I had to actually file the top of these, these flat on this tensioner down here. You can see where those two bolts sit. You can see on that side there where it's been filed flat. That's another fault in there. 3D printing design. Um, I think they need to fix up. So yeah, we're pretty close to being fully complete here. The, um, the table moves nice and freely, like I, like I showed you it. It'll travel full full distance right to the end of the rail here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna mount some sort of limit on the top here so it can, it can sort of home itself and come back here when it hits the end of the drive. And the same way it goes the other end here. It'll travel through the gantry, 
gets to this end here and you can see it touches the, the end plate there too. So yeah, this is all pretty, pretty moving sort of gantry. It feels like there's a bit of weight in it because it's such a big table, but that's why I put, that's why I put two um, stepper motors on it, one each, each side. So once I get those um, stepper motor drivers, there's three of them. Oh, excuse me, it's pretty late at night. There's three of them. Um, one for each of the two uh, Y axis drives, and then there's one for this um, this X axis drive here, and there's a fourth one which will do the Z axis up and down. So once I get once I get all those those drivers, I have to get a J box, assemble them, get all that working, test its function back and forward, and um, yeah, we're getting pretty close. Um, I don't have any additional parts to add on to this thing until I get um, these bearings tomorrow. Once I get those bearings, I'll be able to mount them on there, but there's not much more I can do, really. Um, I'm really waiting for these stepper driver motors to turn up. And then we'll um, get cracking again, so I might um, call it quits for the night. Show you... Um, have an overview of the whole table like I said it's it's fairly wide it's um, between these two rails it's actually 1300 across and it's 1500 in length but if you take away the, the um, 120 mil end plates either side and you take away this thickness of this arrangement in the middle here um, it has 1200 range across the um, across the table actually I'll measure it all I'll push that to the end there. We'll get a tape measure out. All right, so from there to the edge of that table there. Actually, we go from the torch head, which is um, over there. Let me just push that back over here. So we'll, we'll get the torch head over here. Torch head is right there, down to this bit of the table here, is 1250. 12, so that's 1250. We'll bring this down here. So from that 1250, we lose from the end of that plate there to the middle of the torch. Down there, we lose 100, what's that, 250. So we have, we have one meter of table cutting distance there. And across, and across the table, we'll measure that too from torch position. All right, so from center of that torch, the edge of the table here we have 1220. I'll pull it across. And that torch will come right up close to the edge here. 40. So we have um, 1180 by a metre cutting size. So you lose a fair bit because when you consider when you consider these um, table um, tubes, let's see how long they are, these table tubes are, they're 1500 long and across it's 1400, um, when you think about that it's, um, you've lost, lost a fair bit, oh jeez, there we go, you're on again, so we're losing like, um, 450 millimeters and and 500 millimeters the other direction so um, we lost a fair bit there so if you want to cut a full-size plate I want 1200 plate on there you'll need to um, make the table big enough to fit it righto so this is where we're up to as you can see here the um, the tensioners are now on these are just a 3d printed version they show a 
um, a steel version in the plans. But um, these 3D versions look pretty strong, really neat, look professional. The, um, the steel versions look pretty dodgy. So that's the, um, the Y axis tensioner. You can see it there, how it goes across and um, under these idler bearings over the, um, over the stepper motor geared coupling or geared, yeah, geared coupling, I suppose you call it, tooth coupling. Um, back under the idler, along to the end here, to the fixed point for the for the um, the belt. You can see here that it's just got it's just got these little tabs here, and if you take a close look there, you can see that the teeth are, the teeth of the belt are just meshed in to each other. They're kind of like kind of like two gears meshed. This, um, this little tensioner, you just pull it up tight towards the end there and it holds it, holds it really tight. I'll try and get that in focus for you. So yeah, that's the Y axis done, both sides. Um, you'll see around here, this side's done too. What I don't have is I don't have the little tensioners for this side here. I'm just getting them 3D printed today. But again, you can see it goes under the idler, over the tooth gear. I think the belt's a bit slack at the moment because it's not tight. And to the fixed point at this end here, they do look pretty neat. <clears throat> Got a few fine, fine things to do, like trim off some of these excessive bolt lengths that I've got here. I'll just cut them off with a hacksaw. Um, we have the tensioner, the tensioner on the um, x-axis. You can see here, I've got, I've got nuts either side of it. Um, on the x-axis, it allows for this. Like it allows plenty of room for it. But if you can see on the, on the y-axis here, where their design offers up stuff all room here. So there's one of the nuts that holds the, the y-axis gantry runners together. There's, that's how much room I've got between the nut and the back of the tensioner down there. But you can see that, that tapered bit there is like, I don't know, three or four millimeters in there. The, the tensioner itself is this little thing here. When you do the nut up, um, when you tighten this up, it pushes against that part inside there and shoves it back. So I only have room for like three or four millimeters of tension. It's pretty shit design really. They should have, they should have dropped this plate down lower here drop this plate down lower here and had these idlers lower and had that tensioner right in the middle. Would have been a much smarter design. Um, don't know why they did it that way. Um, you can see if, if I go from no tension to full tension, what do I have there, five millimeters? I can't take this any longer this way because you can see the gantry is at the end of stroke here up against the, up against the blocks. Um, yeah, it's a bit odd. I don't know why they did that. It's, like I said, it's a bit of a shitty design. It should have been right in the middle here. Um, and you could have got a, I mean, you could get the full stroke of that bolt um, as, as tension for a tensioner. Um, what else we got here? Stepper motors are on, obviously. All the, all the X axis stuff is on. You can see how the belt rolls, rolls through the, um, through the gear. And you can see how it rolls through the how it rolls through those idlers there. On the other side here, like I mentioned before, I'm still waiting for the for the Z axis um, the Z axis motor drive on a little spindle that goes in it, and then this thing will will work like a floating head, which is um, it's a pretty simple design really. I like what they did with that. That's that's pretty cool. Um, I guess for strength wise in the future, if I'm going to use this more industrially, I'll get these parts made out of aluminium. Um, probably get them laser cut out again, like these other parts. Um, they're just too, too good a quality to not, not use a laser cutter these days. Um, I, I measured my gantry width, so if I run, like I mentioned, if I run full length from side to side, 
on this x-axis I got I think it was 1200 but 1250 between between the bearing housings there um, if I um, let me just see if I can zoom out a bit yep if I if I run it all the way forward and all the way back it's about it's a bit over a meter in full length and I guess that's that's because of the length of these these runners here but as you can see with with the bearing block there stepper motor there 50 mil tube here you have the other part of that block there you only have this much room if you're welding the end plates to get on like making steel end plates you could save that 50 millimeters there and you can bring this runner right in up against the side of this um, this steel tube and you could probably you could probably gain 50 millimeters more on your um, long travel so I think another good improvement for JD's design would be to continue 3D printing these bearing blocks but to get a steel design for these um, for these end plates forget all this gusseting and stuff here if you've got a steel plate on there, you don't need any of this stuff um, and if it's welded to it you don't have to worry about you've got bolts on this side here the one down the back here behind the stepper motor you've got to use a countersunk a countersunk bolt in the back there because as you can imagine it's up against it's up against the body of the motor see how this one this one here sticks out you wouldn't get the motor on there if they didn't have that um, countersunk bolt down the back countersunk screw um, one of the next jobs I've got to do is I've got to um, I've got the wiring stuff to do I'm going to drop this down the side here drill through the end of this drill through the end of this um, cap I'm going to run my stepper motor shielded cable straight through that beam across to this side here we're going to drill out this side here we're going to make some sort of bracket to hold the the cable chain or the catenary whatever you want to call it and that um, that cable chain will run along there and do a full return so if I keep my um, my plasma cut it down here somewhere I'll have a, I'll have a, um, a cable chain or cable via running across this end here too somehow we'll anchor it to this plate here so when it runs back and forward the chain will run across because this is a fixed point I'll probably make it so it bolts into these brackets here hangs out here with some sort of bracket run the chain across the top and return under um, and see what we can do actually we might even do it this side so there's no real moving parts here the motor the motor is sort of fixed there's no like floating head or anything out here so yeah so I'll, we'll be able to bring these cables over here to go into the these cables here to go into long travel catenary the ones coming out the end of the tube here into the long travel catenary or cable chain those ones there coming out of that cable chain run across the top feeding into the the y-axis or long travel catenary and drop it back down to hook it up I don't like the idea of the big looping um, the big looping pole over the top although I did I did drill the holes one on each side of the y-axis gantry in case I needed to run it um, if I do it'll and I run the catenary on this side or cable chain this side the tube will come out of here and it will probably just hold my plasma torch although I need to think about how big that plasma torch how big that pipe has to come up because if it's got to come up from that hole there and it's got to go up it's really got to hang out right out into the middle here somewhere because of the size of my bed so I may even hook up a second um, second cable via chain across the top here so having two a separate one for the a separate one for the um, the plasma torch cable and then one for all my stepper motor cables and the same along the side here I might run a second one through here so it um, it doesn't interfere it doesn't put the two cables side by side and get cross interference so we'll we'll have a go at um, getting that sorted but as for now other than putting those tensions on the other side the actual framework and um, the framework and the um, all the drives and everything is all connected is all set up I have my my junction box ordered I'm going to put um, I'm going to run another tube I'm going to run another tube through down here um, kind of like 
kind of like this pretty much so my j box will fit in in this section here or like i said i'll trim off these excessive bolts the j box will sit in here somewhere so all the electrical will be the same side i'll um i'll fit up i'll fit up another tube on the opposite side over there and maybe some long ones across the front here and have a and have a low bed down here so i can have a a rack for steel off cuts plasma cutter to sit there bits and pieces like that Take away, mozzy. So I guess that's next on the agenda. Just wire it up first, then work out where that's all gonna go. So we're getting really close. Um, like I said, I'm waiting. I think it's, what is the date today? It's probably um, towards the end of October, uh, end of September, so early October. I gotta wait for the Z access screw to arrive. The, um, the J box, the stepper motor drives, um, and I think that's pretty much all I'm waiting for. So once I get those bits and pieces, I'll, um, I'll post another video and we'll do all the wiring and stuff. Another quick look around. You can see everything's connected up. There's the, the bearing blocks. There's the Z access floating head. And like I said, at the moment, it's just sitting there um, doing nothing. It is a, a very large home version of a, of a JD's garage with some, with some improvements. We have both, both um, Y axes on it, dual sets of bearings on both sides here. Um, some other little improvements, like I mentioned about this, um, this X axis. On their original design, they, they say to bolt it in from the top and leave the bolt on the top and leave the bolt on the top in all these three locations. Um, I counterboard the top and put the bolt heads down in there. You can see the bolt head down there and one down there as well. And that allows me to bring this Y axis right over to the side here. So when I set up the limits on this thing, the limits are going to just sit just proud of that end there so, um, so they don't hit the end of the well, actually, this side is where they're hitting here. They're hitting on the um, the floating head. Is hitting on the side of the bearing housing here. You can see. So I need to just clear that by five or ten mil, um, kind of like that, just to clear it. Um, the other thing too was by sinking the other bolt in, I was able to move the tensioner support bracket or anchor point right over the top of it. You can't see it there. And on this side over here, it's on top of that hole as well. So um, you can see where the original holes were supposed to go, here and here. This is supposed to be for the tensioner, this tensioner block here. And this actual tensioner anchor was supposed to go in those two holes. So I just re-drilled them further back, moved it back over that hole. Again, it allowed more, it allowed more um, cross travel or, or um, X access. You can see this side, it goes right over that hole on the JD garage design, that bolt that sticks out the top of that hole is in the way. So that's where it stops right there. But you can see how much clearance I've got here, like 50 millimeters of clearance or, or you know, two inches of clearance, which I can now utilize because I can get it right up against that bearing block over here, over this side. So that's, um, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so watch this space. We're getting there, we're nearly done. Um, and things are getting exciting, you know, like it's, um, if I had all the parts, I would say this thing would be moving under its own steam in the next day or two, but I've just got to wait for a couple of weeks to get the bits and pieces I need. Like I said, keep watching and we'll, um, we'll get some more videos happening. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Got any questions, just, um, hit me up. Oh, I've, I can't say I've never answered a question so far. There's been hundreds and hundreds of questions that I've answered. Um, I'll do my best to, to help wherever I can.